Right, hello everyone. So here's another sequence where we want to prove the limit of that sequence is 3. Okay, so let's start. So for any epsilon greater than 0, let's take the difference between the nth term of the sequence and the suspected limit. So we want to find the simple n. We want to know how large simple n should be or we want to find that capital N so that it guarantees this relationship let's start our we have to start this with simplification right okay let's try to be organized here now the common denominator well um the common denominator is n square minus seven so it's three n square plus n minus three times n square minus seven always be careful with the subtraction here when you're handling the negative sign it's going to be 3n square plus n minus 3n square plus 21, right? n square minus 7. So this is a little bit tricky problem, okay? Let me do the rest here. Now, 3n square cancel out. What we get is n plus 21 over n square minus 7, okay? Now, here's what we want to do. Now here's the thing, we want to bound this and we cannot guarantee that what we have inside this absolute value is always positive, right? Because for example, if n is 1, 1 minus 7 in the denominator is a negative number. Now what can we do here? So we want to find a bound. Here's the thing, um, we want to, let me rewrite again, we want to find a fraction which is larger than what we have right now. So if we find that fraction here, we can bound it by epsilon. So automatically, the fraction that we have to work with is automatically bounded. So how can we find this new fraction? Well, in, in now, unlike the previous problems, in the numerator also a little bit complicated here. Let's think about this. So if you want your new fraction to be larger than what we have here, the numerator has to be larger than what we have here, right? Numerator has to be larger than n plus 21. So how can we find such a numerator? And it has to be simple. I mean, of course, you can take the numerator here to be n plus 22. Then of course, it's larger than n plus 21 because n is positive. But that's not the point. Um, we, have to, we have to make it simple. What can we do? Well, n is positive. How about this? n plus 21 n. Think about this. So 22 n is definitely larger than n plus 21. We only had 21 here. So if you multiply just that 21 by n, of course n is positive. So this is going to be larger than n plus 21, right? So we get 22 n, which is simpler. Okay, we don't have any other operations like addition or subtraction in the numerator. So it's simple. Now, how about 10 square minus 7? We want to find, so here's the tricky part. We want to find an expression which is smaller than n square minus 7. Okay, because then when we take the reciprocal, the opposite happens, right? Because the denominator is a little bit tricky. How can we find an expression where n square minus 7 is large? Here's the thing, n square over 2. Now think about n square over 2. So we want n square over, so we want n square over 2 to be smaller than n square minus 7. So when does this happen? So let's think about this uh, for a second. So let's multiply by 2, 2 n square minus 14. 2 is of course positive, so let's switch the sides. 2 n square minus n square. Let's take 14 to the right. So what we get is n square is greater than 14. Now, when n square is greater than 14, okay, so here's the idea. When n square is greater than 14, this happens. But that doesn't work for any n, right? I mean, n is equal to 1 doesn't work. N, n, equal, n is equal to 2 doesn't work. 2 square is 4. 4 is not greater than 14. n is equal to 3. 3 square is 9. 9 is not greater than 14. n square is equal to 4. Yes. So here's what happens. It doesn't work for all the n, but here we want to, we, the, the idea here in this proof is that n has to be sufficiently large, right? So that's the idea. n has to be sufficiently large so that we can maintain this relationship. So he, the idea here is, well, as long as n is greater than 3, strictly greater than 3, 
n is a n is a positive number so it it does not we don't count decimals so the next number is 4 so n is greater than equal to 4 or any when n is strictly greater than 3 this happens so this happens um, so we can say when n is let me write here when n is greater than 3 we can say n plus 21 absolute value n square minus 7 um, is smaller than 22 n over n square over 2 okay what we had is n square minus 7 is greater than n square over 2 but we take when we deal with dealing with the fractions 1 over n square over 2 is greater than 1 over n square minus 7 okay so that's the idea but it doesn't happen for any n it it happens for n greater than 3 okay so let's keep that in mind now what we want to do is we want to bound this by epsilon so 20 we are working with 22 n over n square over 2 less than epsilon let's take this 2 to the numerator so it's 44 n over n square well n cancel out that leaves us with so 1 n on the denominator so if you switch n and epsilon what will we get n greater than 44 over epsilon okay so capital n is 44 over epsilon here's the thing now this is not the only condition now we have uh, in this problem so this is a different problem so to start it we have two things n has to be greater than 3 strictly greater than 3 and capital n is 44 over epsilon well capital n could be 44 over epsilon or it could be well it could be actually uh, it could be 3 also okay so it could be 3 also because this can be seen as capital n as well all right so how do we choose between 3 and 44 over epsilon here's how we do now let's write the proof let epsilon be greater than 0 and let capital n b okay let capital n be whatever the maximum whatever the largest of 3 and 44 over epsilon now this is crucial okay now uh, it should be a, a simple n should be sufficiently large so to make it sufficiently large we, we we have to we have to choose the largest out of 3 and 44 over epsilon whoever large whoever largest for given the particular epsilon so for uh, for epsilon 1 well between 3 and 44 44 is large so we take that so so likewise likewise we have to choose between 3 and 44 over epsilon depending on the epsilon so we say n is the maximum okay n is the maximum because we have to choose the maximum because simple n should be largest uh, sufficiently large enough to get this expression right so when this happened we can say well we have to work backwards now in greater than 44 over epsilon this imp implies um 22 n over n square is less than epsilon so basically we have to rewrite uh, these steps backwards um so this implies my work is not always the organized but this implies we can simply write that expression in n plus 21 over n square minus 7 is less than 22 n over n square over 2 less than epsilon okay now hence this implies why don't we write this uh, statement directly 3 n square um well we have to fill in the details right uh, so this uh, statement was taken from n plus 21 over n square minus 7 less than epsilon this statement was taken by simplifying what what we started with right n square minus 7 minus 3 is less than epsilon hence the limit here is 3 so we prove that okay so the idea here is this statement you can guarantee that the difference between the limit and the nth term of the sequence is less than epsilon you can guarantee that when n is sufficiently large when capital n is maximum out of 3 and 44 over epsilon so that's a sort of a different problem problem right we got two choices for capital n we had to be careful i think uh, the problem here was that here we had subtraction a term involving subtraction in the denominator it was n square minus 7 if it was n square plus 7 we wouldn't have so much trouble because we can just get rid of the 7 and say that it's bounded by 1 over n square 
but we cannot do that because this is minus. Think about it a little bit. So the tricky part was the denominator. Okay. All right. So yeah, thank you very much.